So please look at this, it's almost 3 hours of continuous recording in 4K60 on the S23 Ultra with 33% battery remaining and still gone. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. One of the most annoying things about Android phones is the thermal management and that's why they never beat the iPhones in recording high resolution videos for a long period of time but I think the S23 Ultra did set a whole new benchmark when it comes to performance and thermal management so let's find out how. Let's start with the thermal management and I will be using high resolution video recording for this matter. I also included the 7 Pro to the test to give you an idea about the gap between another Android flagship and the S23 Ultra and here are the conditions. Both displays are calibrated to produce the same brightness which is 77% on the 7 Pro and about the same on the S23 Ultra. I'm using cellular data instead of the Wi-Fi at 4G connection as the 7 Pro doesn't support 5G in the UAE. The display's resolution is Quad HD and the 120Hz refresh rate is activated. And finally both are running the latest software available at the time of filming this video so let's start the first round in the thermal test. I started the test at 100% battery and the temperature was almost identical on both. And here's a quick look at the video settings. The resolution is set to 4K60, the HDR 10 bit is turned off, I'm using the main camera and now let's begin the first round. After 13 minutes and 10 seconds, the 7 Pro stopped recording due to overheating and the temperature was 41.3 degrees Celsius, so it's out of the competition too soon, while the S23 Ultra is still going like a champ. At this point, my expectations for the S23 Ultra was to complete a maximum of 1 hour and I will be grateful, but the phone kept recording, recording, and recording. So guys, look at this, it's 3.24 in the morning and the S23 Ultra is still recording in 4K60 and look at this, it's almost 3 hours of continuous recording so I'm not sure when it's going to die now we have 33% battery remaining from 100 and it's still going The S23 Ultra reached an insane amount of time without any signs of overheating like dimming the display for example so after 3 hours exactly I wanted to check its temperature hoping that it won't explode at any point. But it was surprisingly good at 43.1 degrees, which is normal for this task. So I gave it more time to record, but I decided to put my Pixel 6a behind the camera and play some videos to let the camera do some processing instead of the static frame. But this didn't make any difference and it continued to record. Just below 4 hours mark, the battery went down to 6% and I did another temperature check and it was at 44.5 degrees. And at 4 hours exactly, the S23 Ultra decided to dim the display, but that's because of the battery which was 5% at this point, not because of the heat. Then I decided to stop the recording myself once it reaches 2% to give it the chance to save the video file before powering off. So here's the moment of truth and the phone is now at 2% battery so I think this is more than enough to stop the recording. It's insane that the phone consumed the whole battery to record a 4 hours long 4K60 video without thermal warnings. Now let's take it out of the tripod and take a look at the video file. Actually the phone died before showing you the file size so I had to charge it and I'm so curious to see this and let's take a look as you see we have a 130 gigabytes file. This is crazy. Actually, the phone didn't cut the video into small pieces, but it actually gave you one file of 130 gigabytes, which is slightly higher than half the storage of this phone. Now I'm very curious to see how this phone will perform at 8K 30 frames per second and also under direct sunlight in very sunny weather. So let's continue with the tests. The second test is to record an 8K 30 video under the same conditions. I did recharge the battery again to 100% and kept the phone to cool down. So let's see if it can keep up the same performance. Again, the S23 Ultra impressed me and kept recording at 8K 30 resolution and already exceeded the 3 hours mark. So let's do a quick thermal test to see how it's compared to the 4K 60 at the same duration. 
The temperature was 43.7, which is slightly higher than the 4060 that was at 43.1 degrees after recording the same three hours. So I kept it recording. So now the display is dimmer, slightly earlier than the 4K60. Now it's dimmer at 3 hours and 54 minutes. And the battery percentage now is 5%. So I'm gonna wait until it reaches 2% and stop the recording. So now the phone did reach 2% battery after recording for 3 hours and 57 minutes versus four hours and three minutes in 4K60. So let's stop the recording and take a look at the file. Now let's take a look at the file size. As you see here, I have three hours and 58 minutes versus four hours and three minutes in the 4K60 recording. And the file size is 133.5 gigabytes, which is not a big difference between the 4K60 and the 8K30, only 3.5 gigabytes more. The next test should be outdoors, but unfortunately today is not a sunny day. The sky has a lot of clouds, so I will wait until it becomes brighter and do the test outdoors. But while waiting, I'm thinking about making the indoors test more aggressive and push everything to the limits. So I will go to the camera, choose 4K60, and then I will jump to settings, then advanced video options. And here I will activate the HDR10 plus and the high bitrate videos. Unfortunately, I cannot activate the high efficiency videos while using HDR10 plus. So I will use those settings and also I will increase the brightness to the maximum and see if that will make the phone overheat. The battery charged again to 100% and the brightness is set to 100% as well. And to avoid wasting your time, let's jump right away to the results. This time the phone stopped after three hours and 40 seconds and the battery was at 21%, but no thermal warnings shown. So let's take a look at the video file to understand more. As you saw, the phone stopped recording after three hours without any thermal warnings. So let's take a look at the file size. And as you see, it's here 182 gigabytes. And that means that the storage has been used completely because I have the 256 gigabytes version and the storage is now full. So still the thermal management of this phone is unbeatable so you can record and finish the whole battery without any thermal warnings at the maximum resolution without any problems. So the only thing remaining now is to test this phone outdoors and see what's gonna happen. For the outdoors test, I will activate adaptive brightness to let the display reach the maximum brightness possible under direct sunlight. And now it's time for today's sponsor. If you use one password for all your accounts to easily remember it, it's probably a good time to stop doing this because if one password got compromised, you will be putting all your other accounts at risk. That's why NordPass is something you should consider, especially with my promo code for personal and business plans, which will give you extra discount, but more about that later. Now the question is, why NordPass? First, it will store all your accounts and apps passwords in addition to your notes, credit cards, and personal info, plus you can securely share items with others, and everything will be stored with full protection and security. Secondly, NordPass will make it easier to manage your passwords, as you can save them with one click, log in automatically, easily import passwords, access your passwords from a browser, and sync them across all your devices. Finally, you can add NordPass extension to your browser on desktop or download the app from Google Play Store or App Store. If you are interested in the personal plan, you can go to nordpass.com forward slash techreviewsnordpass or use the promo code techreviewsnordpass at the checkout to get one month for free on the two years plan. And for business, head over to nordpass.com forward slash techreviewsbusiness or use the promo code techreviewsbusiness to get three months of free trial. All the links and the promo codes are in the description below. And now let's get back to the review. So here's the setup I've made to try the phone outdoors. The phone is attached to the car window and the sun is over here. And as you see, the brightness is to the max and it's set to adaptive. Okay, and the video settings are HDR10 plus 4K60 using the main camera. So let's hit the shutter key. And if you're wondering about the weather temperature, here's from the car dash, it's 26 degrees Celsius, but the sun is very bright and like as you see here on my arm, 
it's very strong and I cannot bear it for a long time actually so this is not something easy on the phone so the reason I made the setup this way is to stay in the shadows while keeping the phone recording under direct sunlight because I will not be able to stay under the sun for a long period of time and one thing I missed to mention is the phone using the cellular data connection which mimics your real life scenario if you are using the phone outdoors to record a 4k video this is exactly will be the case so let's find out how the S23 Ultra will perform under direct sunlight actually the phone stopped recording after exactly 13 minutes and 32 seconds so this is definitely a big difference between the indoors and the outdoors recording so I will also try the normal 4k 60 after it cools down and I will try the, the 8k 30 so to give you also a clear idea about the timings you will get under extreme conditions so now the temperature of the phone is reasonable it's 33.2 which is the minimum I managed to get in this situation and what I will do this time I will turn off the HDR 10 plus video recording actually so let's go to advanced video options turn off HDR 10 plus and also turn off the high efficiency and then go to video and keep it on 4k 60 frames per second so at 4k 60 without HDR 10 plus we got a 15 uh, minutes and 20 seconds which is about two minutes more than the one with the HDR 10 plus so once more I did let the phone to cool down and the temperature is now 34 degrees but this time I will crank up the resolution to 8k 30 and see how long it's gonna take and finally the results of the 8k 30 recording we have a video of 16 minutes and 42 seconds it's a slightly longer than the 4k 60 because some clouds came in the way which made it easier for the phone uh, but it's about the same average actually the sun now is not as harsh as it used to be because there are some clouds so I wanted to give the S23 Ultra one more test at 4K60 without HDR10 bit and see how this gonna work. So now we are done with the final test under the clouds and if you take a look here at the temperature it's 53.2 and the video file is 21 minutes so now it's time for the 7 pro as a reference i have here adaptive brightness enabled i have the lte connection activated and the starting temperature is 33.5 uh, i will start the test with the 4k 60 without hdr because at 60 frames you don't have this feature available so let's give it a try so at 4K 60, the 7 Pro stopped at a temperature of 41.4, which is far less than the temperature of the S23 Ultra. It seems like the 7 Pro has more aggressive safety features. And when it comes to the duration, it was only 4 minutes and 2 seconds. And here is the file information if you want to take a look at it. Now we are done with the whole thermal test and there was a big gap between recording indoors and outdoors but I was impressed by the S23 Ultra performance either way. But what's interesting here is how the phone tolerates the heat. So for example after the first video which was recorded at 4K HDR10 plus 60 frames per second I took a screenshot from the temperature and it was 46.7 degrees and then I recorded at 4k 60 without hdr 10 plus and the temperature was 52 degrees which is a really high number and finally i recorded the 8k and the temperature was 52.6 degrees in comparison the 7 pro stopped recording once it reached 41.4 degrees which is a very huge gap in how each phone tolerates the heat so maybe that's why it recorded longer but I'm really impressed by the outcome now it's time to test the performance and here I was trying to push both phones to their limits by selecting a set of heavy tasks that can work together and see how each phone will respond to an extreme condition like this 
So let's jump to the performance test and see the results. First, the conditions mentioned at the beginning of the video apply here and you will see the screen refresh rate at the top left corner. And here is how the performance test will take place. First, no apps are running in the background. Then I will start a Zoom meeting. Then I will activate the screen sharing. Then go to YouTube. And then it shows a 4K video and set it to the maximum resolution 2160 60p HDR activated and then start playing and let the video play in picture in picture view. Then I will start the screen recording and finally open Asphalt 9. And I will keep doing this for 30 minutes. Right off the bat, the 7 Pro didn't have a good start. After just one minute, once I loaded a race in Asphalt 9, everything became very laggy. So if you take a look at the video, you will see it lags a lot and it also stops completely for a few seconds, then plays again. And the game was no exception. While the S23 Ultra was very smooth, as if it's asking for more tasks to do, so let's keep going. And exactly after 2 minutes and 33 seconds, the 7 Pro stopped the cellular connection completely. And 12 seconds after, at 2 minutes and 45 seconds, Asphalt 9 crashed. So it was a disaster. The outside temperature maxed out at 42.7 degrees and the internal was 41. On the other hand, the S23 Ultra is still going, so let's see if it can make it to the 30 minutes mark. And finally, the S23 Ultra finished the whole 30 minutes without an issue. And the temperature was between 48 to 49 degrees. And the phone was very smooth in the home screen navigation, but Google Discover was slow, which is expected. Then I checked the screen recording and it did record the whole 30 minutes without any issues. So that was a huge win for the S23 Ultra. Of course, this test doesn't represent any real life scenario, but it shows how powerful is the phone, which in return will give you a faster performance and longer lifespan without the need to upgrade your phone. So that's pretty much it for today. That was my performance and thermal management test for the S23 Ultra. And I was really impressed by the efforts Samsung made in two of the most important areas to any smartphone user. And I wish to see the same in more Android phones in the future. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.